begin by saying, I'm so sorry for the loss of your father. Thank you. I'm wondering, before we get into the details of the story, if you can let us know how your mom is doing, because she's now been moved to a different facility as well. Uh, yeah, we haven't been able to talk to her because she's in isolation. As, uh, as soon as she was brought to the hospital, they, uh, they considered that she was a potential uh, COVID carrier. So she's been in isolation, um, which is a good thing. We're, we're happy about that because we were trying to get Heron to test her for COVID for the last uh, four or five days, and they were refusing to test her. We are hearing so many troubling details coming out. Now, there is a police investigation, and eventually, hopefully, the truth will come out. But today, the government confirmed that 31 people had died at that facility just since the middle of March. And this is a facility you and so many others trusted to take care of the most important people in your life, your immediate family members, your parents. When all of this started coming out publicly and you started hearing about it, what was going through your mind? There were some things that weren't new to us that didn't uh, didn't surprise us. Uh, certainly, the number of dead surprises. Uh, the, I mean, that's a, that's an average of more than one body a day coming out of that building. And uh, the regional health authority that stepped in and was supposedly supervising what was going on says they didn't know anything about it. They only found out about it in the files. But I don't know how they did not notice that one body a day or more was leaving that building. I don't know how they could not know that. The, uh, I mean, they were working side by side with the, the, the staff at Heron, and I don't think the staff at Heron are monsters. I think they, they're in healthcare and they care about the people that they work with and that they take care of every day. I find it incredible that they're, that they're saying they knew nothing that was going on and they were in that building for two weeks. Uh, just to give folks at home a bit of perspective, we know that uh, 31 people have died at Heron since mid-March. Now, on average, in a given month, I, I read somewhere that it's about five people who would die. So you can see that huge spike in numbers. Um, five of the 31 have been confirmed to have COVID-19, but there does seem to be this... this information that doesn't seem to jive what exactly was going on there now you mentioned some things didn't surprise you that you started hearing about heron in the last couple of days what what didn't surprise you was there something happening there that troubled you in the past yeah well yeah on the uh, the day that uh, that the regional health authority stepped in uh we we had been talking to our mother and she was uh, normally she's taken out of her bed in the morning and put in her wheelchair uh no one showed up with her breakfast no one showed up to take her out of the bed and put her in her wheelchair uh, and uh, so we started freaking out. My sister thought uh, actually that what was happening there was the same thing that happened in Spain where the army came in and found people dead in their beds, ironically. Um, so we started calling around in a panic. I think uh, that's part of the reason why the CUS stepped in because we talked to all kinds of nurses and healthcare professionals that we knew in the West Island and they made sure that the information went up the chain that something weird was going on because uh, we weren't able to contact anybody at, at Heron that day. Uh, when someone finally came by to see my mother, uh, they they apologized. They said there was only two people working the entire floor, and that's uh, there's probably about 60, 60 residents on that floor. Uh, quite a number of them who can't move, can't feed themselves. Uh, so you can imagine how much time it takes for one worker to come in, change a pair of diapers, uh, spoon feed someone, uh, and then go on to the next patient. There's no way they could give anybody service, and so. Finally, when someone came by to, to see my mother, uh, her diapers needed changing and her, uh, her uh, urine bag had kind of burst. And they said, I've only got time to do one thing. What would you like me to do? And she felt like she had to choose between the two of those. So she chose to have her diaper change. Meanwhile, her, her uh, catheter was dripping on the floor and there was urine on the, on the floor and they didn't even come by to clean that up until the next day. Uh, I just... I. I can't imagine how difficult this was. If, when your mother was relaying these details to you, how did she sound? Was she scared? Was she angry? What, what was it my, like my for mother's her? A, my mother is actually a very caring person. She said she felt, she felt guilty about complaining. She said, you know, it's not so bad for me, but this building is full of old people, you know. <laughs> my, my mother is 87 and she's worried about the old people in the building. Um, so, you know, relatively speaking, her problems weren't that great compared to, to people who couldn't even feed themselves. You know, I don't even know if they were fed. Uh, they, you know, they, they certainly weren't having their diapers changed. They weren't having all of their needs taken care of because there were simply not enough staff in the building. Now, your, 
your dad was moved out several days ago. Um, why was he moved uh, and your mother wasn't? What was going on there in that situation? And now, sadly, your, your father is gone. Yeah. Uh, my, my father was in pretty good health up until uh, the fall. Uh, and then uh, we discovered by December that he had had uh, uh, a couple of strokes and he had vascular dementia. So when he came back from the hospital for the second time in January, uh, he required a lot more assistance than he had before. So they wanted to uh, increase uh, the monthly rent for my father from 3200 to $5,000. So uh, we said we can't afford that and we applied to have him uh, enter it into the public system and that's why he was transferred. Are you able to have a funeral? Are you able to gather as even a handful of you as a family to, to mourn the loss of your dad? Um, well, we, you know, my attitude towards this is that, uh, uh, you know, there's no expiry date uh, on, uh, on mourning. Uh, so if we have the ceremony to celebrate the life of my dad six months from now, I think he, if he was still, if he was, could weigh in on this, he would say it's much more important that people stay safe and that people gather to, to mourn me. So I think he would be in agreement with the delay. Uh, he was he was cremated. His 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 urn is sitting in in uh, the funeral home, uh, in the uh, in the monument. And uh, when it's safe to gather, that's when we're going to gather and celebrate the life of my father. You were saying earlier that you believe the the people who work at the facility care. They're in the business of caring for others. Who do you think ultimately bears responsibility if, in fact, there was neglect taking place at Heron? Well, we, when the when the, the CS, uh, which is the Regional Health Authority, when they stepped in uh, uh, on March 29th, uh, we were really happy. We thought it was like the cavalry had arrived and they were gonna they were gonna save the day. Um, but uh, quite honestly, there were still problems even after the CS had, had stepped in uh, with uh, the care that my mother was receiving, um, and. Uh, you know, I have I have a lot of difficulty accepting their explanations for why they didn't do anything. I think they completely screwed up, and they they they, they missed the they 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 should have intervened much more actively right at the beginning, rather than waiting two weeks and getting a court order and finally looking at the records. And and I don't think they needed to look at the files to know that there was one more than one dead person a day being dragged out of that building. I think. You know that they they must have heard from the other staff. It wasn't a big secret. These you know these thirteen dollar an hour workers were not uh, following the owner's omerta rules and not talking about it. I'm sure that the CS staff who were in there were hearing these stories. I can't believe that they only found out yesterday what was going on. I think they, the the staff who were working in there were hearing things. Uh, maybe they reported them up the chain. The media didn't hear about them because there's uh, there are omerta rules in the CS where uh, health employees are not allowed to talk to media without authorization. I think that's what went on. I think that's why we didn't find about it from them. So I hate to say this, but I think, you know, there's a responsibility on the part of the CS for keeping this information quiet. You know, you're describing your mom worried about the old people, and meanwhile she's in yeah. her 80s. So your mom sounds like, you know, she's, she's quite tough and she's... Um, quite a solid personality, you know, a very caring person, as you mentioned. You seem to be also quite solid <laughs> and keeping a good head on your shoulders in the middle of what must be such a difficult time. I just wonder how, how are you dealing with this? How, how are you feeling? Um, uh, I have uh, four brothers and sisters and uh, we were all raised by really amazing parents. Uh, so I think any credit for how we're behaving belongs to my father and, and to my mother. Um, my my mother has a great sense of humor. My father as well. He was very well, res well respected by the the people who worked for them over the years. Uh, all kinds of tributes are pouring into what I, about what a kind and funny and and generous guy he was. And these are all true. I'm not just saying that because I'm his, his son. You know, he's he was an amazing man. Uh, and my mother. Uh, no offense to anyone else's mother, but my mother is the best mother in the world. You're probably right. <laughs> so, Thank you. <laughs> Peter, um, may your father rest in peace. I hope your mom is back in, in full swing and action very soon and help, healthy and happy. And I hope you can all be reunited really soon. Thank you again so much for making time I for us. I hope so too. Thank you very much. You're welcome.